Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have another single board computer to show off to you. This is the MediaTek X20 from 96 Boards. This is an Android development board. It is not meant to be a maker board, but you could definitely get away making stuff with this board. So this board was not put out to compete with the Raspberry Pi 3. This is a very expensive board coming in at $199 for this unit. So here's what comes in the box, the board, and you also have some brass standoffs. You don't even get a power supply unless you order it with it. It takes 12 volts. I'm using a 12 volt, three amp power supply for this board. Let's go ahead and get into the specs because this thing is pretty loaded. So all the 96 boards are laid out in the same fashion. At the heart of this board, we have the Helio X20 CPU. It's a 10 core CPU. Two cores are A72 at 2.1 gigahertz. Four cores are A53 at 1.95 gigahertz, and another four cores are A53 at 1.4. The GPU is a Mali T880 MP4, so it's a four core GPU and it can be clocked as high as 800 megahertz. Not a bad GPU, I've seen the MP2 perform pretty well in some lower end P10 phones, so we'll see how this works. The board also contains 2GB of DDR3 RAM, 8GB of onboard eMMC storage, two USB 2.0 ports, HDMI 1.4, SD card slot, micro USB for fast boot, and it also uses a barrel jack for power. Now this board is powered anywhere from 8 volts to 12 volts. I'm using a 12 volt 3 amp power supply for this. It also has a power button and volume control right above the USB 2.0 ports. I previously did a video on the High Key 960 from 96 Boards, and as you can see on the right here, we have the High Key 960. On the left, we have the MediaTek X20. Looks pretty much the same here. They offer a bunch of boards, and they're laid out in the same fashion, so if you were to 3D print a case, all of these boards should fit. Size comparison time. Starting from the very far left, we have the Asus Tinker Board, followed by the X20 MediaTek, the Orange Pi Lite, the Raspberry Pi 3, and at the very bottom, we have the Raspberry Pi 0W. So the MediaTek X20 is right in line with the Raspberry Pi sizes. It is laid out a bit different. As you can see, the USB ports are coming off the side instead of the front of the board or the back of the board, however you want to look at it. I actually like this a lot better. I wish they added one more USB 3.0 port to this board, but I can definitely work with two USB 2.0 ports. Adding a hub shouldn't be any trouble at all, even if it needs to be powered. It's now time to move on to some performance. Now, I'm very limited here. We're only working with Android 6.0, but hopefully in the future, MediaTek puts out a NuGet or even a Linux build for this board. Let's move over and see how it performs. All right, so in this video, I'm just going to run some benchmarks and see how it performs in synthetic benchmarks. I know that's not real world performance, but later on down the road, probably the end of this week, I'll do a video on some native Android gameplay emulation and things like that. The board did come preloaded with an older build, and I went to get their newest build, but that was released in December of 2016, so we're still working with an older build. Two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Move over to the CPU, we have the MediaTek Helio X20. As you can see, it's a 10 core CPU. Have eight A53 cores at 1.8 and two at 2.3. So their spec sheet was a little wrong. The power management seems pretty decent. We're not clocking every single core right now because we're not doing much at all. So a lot of these cores should be sleeping and it looks like they are. Display. I thought this was 1080p and there's no way to change it within the display settings. It's only at 720, which is a bit disappointing. Their spec sheet was correct about the Mali T880 being a four core GPU, but we only do OpenGL ES 3.1. A lot of new devices are doing 3.2. Old build of Marshmallow, like I said, this was released on their website in December. This is the newest version I can find. I'm really hoping for an update very shortly. Thermal? Through all of these tests, I used a small fan. The CPU is very small and I don't have a heat sink that will fit on it. So I set a fan right on top. We should not be throttling at all. One thing I should mention is Google Play does not come pre-installed. I had to install this using a method I use on a lot of single board computers that seems to work. 
I was unable to run a 3D mark, it does freeze the board. Same thing with GFX OpenGL, it just freezes the board. But I was able to pull off an Intutu, a Geekbench, a Sun Spider, and an Octane 2.0 benchmark. So for N22, we scored a 68,766. Not bad, but it's not top of the line at all. 3D score was decent at 8,834, given that we just have that 884 core GPU. Not bad, but not phenomenal either. So I always like to check out the rankings and see where we stand against other devices. So we're going to go into rankings. We're going to be all the way at the bottom, but as you can see, those iPhones are destroying everything right now. So we're not that far underneath the Galaxy Note 5. Now I know the Note 5 is an older phone, but they're still asking a grip for them on eBay. So 68,766, we're way down here. Let's head over to Geekbench and check out the single and multi-core scores. This is Geekbench 4 from the Google Play Store. Remember, I do have sufficient cooling on this CPU. We scored a 1,604 for single core and our multi-core was 4,661. I'm actually impressed with the multi-core score. Then again, it is a 10 core CPU. Let's see how this thing stacks up. We're just gonna go to view online and see what they got listed here. So we'll check the top multi-core scores here. And at the top is that Kirin 960, the same thing that's in that other 960 board that I have at 6,029. Galaxy S8 Plus, 5,501. We're not that far behind it. I'm actually very surprised we scored so high. So remember, we scored a 4,661. We're still below the Galaxy Note 7, P9. It's really great to see that this board isn't at the bottom of the list. Since I wasn't able to get any other benchmarks to work without crashing the board, we're going to do an online JavaScript benchmark. This has been around for years. This is Sun Spider. Lower is better. Let's fast forward through this and see what we can score. This benchmark does have a lot to do with the browser you're using. Lower is better. We scored a 687 milliseconds. To put this into perspective, the Raspberry Pi 3 running Raspbian scores anywhere from a 2800 to a 3600. So we're way faster than that, but this board was not meant to compete with the Raspberry Pi. The last benchmark I ran in this video is an Octane 2.0 browser based benchmark. Gonna just throw this out there, the Raspberry Pi 3 scores anywhere from like an 1800 to a 2600, and I'm being really nice about that 2600. The MediaTek X20 scores an 8,801. Now this score will vary depending on the browser you're using. If I run these on my PC in Chrome, I always end up scoring higher if I run them in Edge. So overall, for an Android development board, it does a pretty good job. Hopefully I can find something a little newer, like a newer build, or even build one from scratch, because this one is from last December. I'm sure we can get a little bit more performance out of it. So keep an eye out because I'm going to have more videos on this coming up. By the end of the week, I'll do another video on native Android apps and some emulation. I know this is meant to be an Android development board. It's $199. It's not meant to be a maker board, but there's no reason we can't have fun with this thing. If you are interested in purchasing something like this, I'll leave Amazon links down below. I'm also going to leave links to the 96 boards webpage. They have a forum there so you can ask tons of questions if you have anything that's worrying you about it before you purchase it. If you don't want to buy it, not going to hurt my feelings. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.